All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli, and joining me on this Friday, as he has been for most of the offseason, is Mr. Kyle Sullivan, Shaggy Von Doom himself. How's it going, my friend? I am doing wonderful. How are you, my friend? Doing good. You just uh, wrapped up your own uh, another episode of your here in Puckburg with a uh, member of the PHF, correct? That is yes. correct. Looking forward to that. So uh, who was it? Throw it out there. We have uh, next week. We will have Ali Monroe of the Connecticut whale. All right. So um, yeah, definitely check that out. It's cool stuff. So uh, for us today, we will be discussing the Colorado avalanche at the Arizona rookie prospect tournament. Um, the Avalanche will be on 13 nationally televised games through ESPN and TNT. We'll go through those. And uh, some more Jersey stuff. I kind of want to get Kyle's take on the the blue numbers because uh, that seems to be the most important thing in Avalanche world right now. <laughs> not, I mean, not any of the stuff that we just talked about or that I'm prefacing for this episode. Uh, <laughs> blue numbers seems to be what we have to talk about. And I get it. This is, you know, that that's, that's what you're known for. That's what people see. You know what I mean? That, that, that's your, that's your colors. So it's Rocky mountain extreme blue numbers, Blue number, right, right <laughs> below it. Yeah. Oh boy. All right. Well, we'll get to that. But first things first, as I always follow the show, social media outlets, Twitter, L O P N underscore avalanche, Instagram, locked on Aver- avalanche, send questions, comments, concerns, opinions to locked on avalanche at gmail.com. And of course, check the show out on its YouTube feed or channel. Uh, just search for Lockdown Avalanche. All right, sir. Um, Avalanche will be taking part in the Arizona rookie face-off, I think they're calling it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I, you know, we've been talking about it a little bit here and there. Obviously features the Arizona Coyotes, San Jose Sharks, Los Angeles Kings, Anaheim Ducks, Vegas Golden Knights and our Colorado Avalanche um, had that kind of brief four on four uh, scrimmage between the Avalanche players. to kind of get them prepped for this. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, you know, you're going to have some big name guys. All those guys that really took part in that four on four um guys like alex newhook and bowen byram and sampo ranta and alex bukage like a lot of guys that you want to see and get some some reps in uh they're all gonna be there so looking forward to this kind of what's your what's your take on it yeah especially with what you were seeing coming out of the four on four um the names that you had on your list you want to see how they perform and we're kind of we're kind of blessed with the division that we're in because anaheim and Los Angeles have really good prospects in their system. So if we want to test uh, Byram, Bocage, what better way to do it than against some really top-level prospects? So I'm looking forward to seeing what these prospects look like, what the Avs have coming up through the system. Um, It's going to be really exciting. Yeah. Um, And then, you know, just throwing out some other names. Obviously, Justin Barron. Um, Oscar Olausen will be there, the most current member of the Avalanche and uh, the most recent draft. So, yeah, a lot to uh, want to take in and see what, uh, you know, some of the young guys have from guys like Newhook, who should be kind of like head and shoulders above, you know, a lot of the people in this tournament to guys like Olausen, who yeah. brand new, but a lot is expected of him. What can he do with some, uh, you know, playing against, uh, up and comers basically um so looking forward to it but here's the interesting thing is uh you're you might not be able to actually watch it depending on where you live in the country and i had talked about the uh the avalanche four on four game scrim you know inter uh squad scrimmage and i had talked about it on yesterday's episode how i was kind of annoyed that it wasn't broadcast uh, just simply on the avalanche website. It's not that difficult to do. I thought they should have done it. You're drumming up excitement for the simple fact that, you know, it's avalanche players. Doesn't matter that they're prospects. A lot of these guys, maybe some of these guys will play for the team this year. Some might not. None of that matters. 
-hmm. It's just wanting to watch live hockey with uh, real live hockey right around the corner. This is going to be broadcast on coloradoavalanche.com and you can watch it if you live in the market. I don't get that. <laughs> Number one, like this is this isn't a full like tournament. This isn't like uh, the Olympics or anything. This isn't uh, Stanley Cup playoffs. This isn't the regular season where you have blackouts. Why are you blacking this out? The, again, this is something. Why? But this is like reverse blackout. Normally, the yeah. blackout is for the the uh, market of the home team, but the market of the home team can watch this. Great. I'm, I'm glad people in in Colorado and, and Denver can watch this because there's a lot going on still between you know entities at each other's throats that a lot of Avalanche fans can't watch Avalanche hockey. So great. I'm glad they can watch it on the website. But why not expand this out to the entire country? Because Avalanche fans are all across the country. You are in uh, the great state of Alabama, sir. So you can't watch this. And neither can I. And it's crazy. In just a year's time, we were complaining last year when nobody was allowed into Ball Arena to watch the Avalanche. And still the Denver area was blacked out. And we were saying, why is this blacked out? And now here we are. Fast forward. Now we are in our respective states saying, why can't we watch this? So, yeah, it feels a little uh, childish, but how the, you know. how the turntables, um, <laughs> but I, I can kind of understand it. Um, this is, you know, it's like you were saying, we're hyped. It's live hockey. You get to see our prospects. Granted, we don't get to see it, but it's the advantage of it being your home team. So mm. hopefully this does get people fired up and, buying preseason tickets and season tickets and getting them in the doors. Maybe that's the motive behind this move, but I am not happy that I don't get to watch the avalanche. So, well, and, and, you know, the internet's a great thing. So uh, I'm not saying you'd find ways around it, but you follow people on, uh, you know, Twitter, there's going to be clips posted all the time. And, um, Maybe after the fact, they'll release it. Maybe it's just something that it's, you know, watching it live, you won't be able to see. But um, even if they do something like, I love how the NHL would always put like game summaries up on, yeah. on their website and on YouTube. And they're like eight, nine, 10 minute summaries. So you get a good gist of the game. Yeah. Will they Those do something the like that? I, I don't know. I mean, this isn't really... This is more of like the those individual teams thing. So I think the the Avalanche would have to post that up, which they might do. They might do it. And and this is something like this year, uh, like I was mentioning with the Ducks, like to see Sampo Ranta going up against like Zegras. Like yeah. these are matchups that you really want to see. So there's a lot of buzz in this in this prospect camp. And uh, it would be nice for us to get to enjoy. Um, like I said, I'm glad Denver does. And I'll, I'll find it one way or another. <laughs> I, I, I don't, aren't you kind of just like – amazed that we're as you know technologically advanced as we are right now and we're still doing things like blackouts and you know just open it up to everybody i, I get it i'm not going to get into this i understand why they do it and stuff like that but um it seems like it's becoming like an archaic form of uh how you how you present sports right now yeah. because we, we we're, we're adapting and adjusting to the streaming aspect of it um, and when you do that, people can find their way around things. When 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 you open th things up to the internet, uh, people are savvy. Yep. And, uh, NHL, get rid of those blackouts. Quit making us criminals. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but either way, I mean, I'm sure I'll, I'll get you know some pretty good updates on it, and we'll definitely be able to talk about it. So, uh, but looking forward to it. I think it should be yeah. fun. All right, um, and. We'll take a, a quick break here and we come back. We will talk about uh, games that we can watch and the uh, 13 games that were announced that the Avalanche are going to be playing uh, on national television one way or another. Uh, but first, betonline.ag. And we are back and better than ever with a brand new NHL season. Uh, and once again, Kyle and I are recording on a Thursday night when football is going on. Uh, because it's the who is it the Giants and Washington somebody oh yeah we don't care <laughs> uh, but if you do 
throw some scratch down and do it at betonline.ag. It's your number one sport for all of the or number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, betonline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up. And when you do, you will receive a 100% welcome bonus. That is double your initial deposit just for signing up. And don't forget to use the promo code NFL100 from football, basketball, boxing, obviously hockey, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online. It's the fastest and easiest way to bet in all of your sports action they are your online sports book experts. Also brought to you by Direct TV Stream. And I want to tell you about a simple way to get all of the entertainment that you love without the hassle. It's Direct TV Stream. It brings your live TV and on demand favorites together like never before, which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and TV shows all in one place. Best of all, there's no annual contract. So stop waiting and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream and you can learn more at directtv.com. So again, go to directtv.com to learn more about DirecTV Stream. All right. Uh and you're you're uh because you live in Alabama, obviously big football state, and you are Auburn. You you, you side on the Auburn side, right? How how are they this year? Are they deceptive they deceptive 2 and 0, oh, but we're playing Penn State this weekend? The true test, and so Penn State's good. See, I don't follow. I follow a couple teams, but I, I'm not into like the big. Penn State is a good team this year. Oh uh, well, we played two absolute cupcakes and uh-huh. put sixty points against both teams. So we're actually a team that everybody knows. This is our first right, uh, yeah, first opportunity under a new coach. I saw something the other day that said Alabama was favored by like fifty five and a half points. Yeah, and I'm just like. Why watch? <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> parody uh, is lacking in college. They, they do not have the parody the NHL does. Let's uh, no, we, we can no. Um, all right. So, having said that, the Avalanche was announced that they will be on thirteen nationally televised games between ESPN, TNT, and ESPN Plus slash Hulu. Uh, we'll run through these games, kind of. I guess almost continue our talk. We were talking about uh, blackouts and stuff like that, but uh, opening the season, which, you know, we knew that Wednesday, October 13th against the Blackhawks. And I'll just kind of run through these and uh, any ones that stick out to you. So Colorado avalanche and the Washington capitals. I think that could be a pretty decent game. Love that. There's going to be a uh, matchup against the golden Knights. That one is on straight up ESPN, which I think is a smart move. Mm -hmm. Uh, They will have them playing Seattle Kraken, uh, the New York Rangers, Dallas stars division games are always good. Another Blackhawks game, uh, the Anaheim ducks, the Los Angeles Kings. That one is on uh, regular ESPN, Uh, the Boston Bruins, which is on TNT. That should be a good matchup. Uh, the Penguins, which that says ABC slash ESPN plus. So that's a Saturday one o'clock in the afternoon game. So that's, Ooh. Uh, yeah, so that's good. That's a good time slot for that. Um, Los Angeles Kings again. So two games against the Kings. And then the final one is uh, on ESPN against the St. Louis Blues. That one is April 26th. That is the third to last game of the season. So. Um, always good games against the blues late in the season. And, and, you know, there could be some, a lot riding on that one, depending on how yep. things are playing out. So, um, overall some pretty good games here. I like that. They got a, like I said, a Vegas game, a Kraken game. I think a lot of people are going to want to see anything with Seattle this year. Um, and then you have, you know, original six stuff, obviously with the Blackhawks twice, the New York Rangers, the Boston Bruins. So they're putting them up against, uh, some pretty, good matchups i think overall yeah espn really did their research when it came to national televised matchups you got nate versus sid on the slate you got two games against the kings which everybody you kind of look at you're like why does that make sense the kings have been kryptonite for us for a while (laughs) i don't know what it is don't sour on the kings yeah they are they 
they just they know how to get to us. So those are those will be very entertaining. Maybe restoking that rivalry between us and the Blackhawks. Um, I mean, with Flurry and Net and all the additions that the Blackhawks have done, that could be a very entertaining matchup and storyline throughout the season as how we match up against Chicago. Mm-hmm. And it's all the Avalanche playing the Capitals, those are always incredible games. Those are always very underrated, but and they are so much fun. I was going to mention that one, and I think a lot of what Washington will get is be you know clearly because of Ovechkin, and you yeah. know he he he's not gonna you know he, it's going to take him a few years obviously to catch Gretzky, but this year he could pass, I think, two guys to put him into third place uh, solely, I believe. So yeah, you're you're not watching him to catch Gretzky this year clearly. But he's still going to pass some very big names, and I think he's only one or two behind. Who is he behind? Uh, I've, uh, I I should have brought it up, but it doesn't matter. Um, so, but I don't think Washington's going to be that good of a team this year. I think they're going to take a step back. They have a lot of yeah. Uh, I was listening to another show, and and I didn't realize this. They have thirteen guys over the age of thirty. Oh. Yeah. And and I hate I mean, I'm 40. So it's like <laughs> I'm talking about 30 year olds, man, that they, they're going to break they, a hip out there. But um, that show that showed in their in their playoff game uh, in their playoff series last year, they were going down to their backup backup goalie. Yeah, so it was it was bad. Yeah, I could see. That. So I, I think, you know, while the Avalanche should take care of business there. It's still going to be, you know, it's going to be billed as Nathan McKinnon versus Alex Ovechkin. Let's get real. And that'll that'll turn some heads. Um, So, yeah, I think overall a good slate of games to watch on the the national uh, slate for the abs. Now, this is getting into um, streaming and blackouts and stuff like that. I don't know how it's working. I know ESPN Plus is taking over from NHL TV. And we were we were figuring it out before we went live here, and and, and basically, yeah, like ESPN Plus is your is your center ice technically for the internet, uh, where center ice is center ice for your cable provider. So if you don't go through a cable provider, you, you can get your all of your games through package, but you have to go through ESPN Plus this year instead of uh, NHL TV. And I'm assuming all the blackout stuff works the same. I think it does. Um, I, I cannot believe this stuff is still going on between altitude and, and Comcast. It, it, this is just, this is just going on for way too long. And and while we were saying like in the first segment, I'm happy the people of Colorado, like get something, even if it's uh preseason meaningless, uh, prospects playing a, a, a tournament. Um, because if you're sticking with Comcast, you're not getting avalanche hockey. And I think this is just going to continue with this package, which is horrible because you have a good team and you haven't been able to watch them. And it's nice that they have 13 national games. Um, that's more opportunities not to get creative on the internet to watch your avalanche. Mm. Wink, wink, nod, nod. <laughs> but like yeah, to have the blackout still being a problem, the Comcast thing that never seems to go away, um, that's going to be terrible. I not looking forward to that storyline going into the season, but I'm glad that we are going to ESPN plus because I was an NHL.TV subscriber. Haven't missed an avalanche game in probably the last six years, even being here in Alabama and to have a more user-friendly interface as ESPN plus, that's going to be great for everyone like me who is accustomed to NHL.TV. Yeah. And it just seems like the the conversation has died down. Like I'm sure there's conversations going on, but a lot of times these things, uh, when when there's like you know dissension between those two entities, it happens all the time. You know, between a, a provider and a, and a network, and there are times where the channel gets removed, but it gets removed for a week or a couple of weeks or up up to a month. I mean, we're going on years for this thing now. So, uh, and and it just seems like just f- from the outside looking in, you don't hear about it on, you know, any, like any anybody kind of really reporting on that talks are being had. Uh, there's any headway being made. I don't know. I don't know how this ends. I don't know what the hangup is at this point. Uh, it just seems like both sides are dug in and, and it is what it is. And it sucks. Not only, you know, 
uh, clearly Avalanche have a good team, but also the Denver Nuggets are, yeah. are a, a solid bet. So you're missing both of those uh, teams that that can be competing for a championship in those sports, and that's awful that that the home crowd can't watch that stuff. And I know from firsthand experience with a situation like this, we experienced it. Uh, I think it was two years ago, right before college football started, and we were about to lose our local uh, CBS affiliate, and we weren't going to be able to watch our Alabama games. <laughs> I'll let you know, Denver. the The way to make it happen is you got to get loud. Um, yeah. If you want to watch your Nuggets, if you want to watch your Avalanche, if you want to watch your Rapids, you got to get loud and let them know that this is what you want because that's what they want. They want to be coddled to coddle to them. <laughs> yeah, get your team well, back and get that blackout. Uh, we'll get that because otherwise you're going to be blacked out. And you're not going to be able to watch really good teams at a really good time. And if you remember on on altitude during the games, they were telling you switch over to Direct TV. Yeah, like if you want to watch the Avalanche games, switch over because that's how you can do it. Um, I didn't really see. I don't think they were doing that last year. I didn't see it too much last year, but um. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think the the rhetoric has died down. Maybe they bring it back during the broadcast on Altitude this year. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to see. But if enough people do that, like you're saying, that that's a way to get loud. Say, I, it's too important to me to, to 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 not miss an Avalanche game or a Nuggets game. Yep. So I'm going to go somewhere else to to watch it. So yep. that, you have that power to do that. So, um, all right. So. Let's hear from a couple more sponsors, and then I will get your take on blue letters, numbers. Sorry, not letters. Blue blue numbers. So is that a David Lynch movie? Probably. <laughs> oh, blue velvet, blue velvet. <laughs> oh, blue is blue velvet David Lynch? Yeah. Is it? I don't think I've ever seen that. Really good. I've heard it's good, though. All right. Uh, RockAuto.com. And with the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. So save and ta- save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30 50 even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto, it's a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything that you could need. Brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, new carpet. And you can go explore their easy-to-use website today and find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com and see all the parts available for your car or truck, right? Locked on in there. How did you hear about a section so they know that we sent you to them? Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. It's rockauto.com. Finally, Built Bar. Shaggy Von Doom has placed an order. They are on the way. So maybe next week we'll get a uh, update on which flavors you've had, but he has ordered his box of built bar and he got the, uh, the mixed box, right? You got two, two each of uh, nine flavors. I did indeed. All right. So you can choose your flavors between coconut, mint, brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel. It is the best tasting protein bar on the market. Not only is it the best tasting, but they are healthy. 17 to 18 grams of protein calories range from 130 to 180 four to five grams of sugar four to five grams of net carbs amazing flavors all tasty and all healthy and if you go to builtbar.com right now use the promo code locked one five which is exactly what kyle did you will get 15 percent off of your order once again that promo code is locked 15 locked one five 15 percent off at builtbar.com all right, so blue numbers um, seems to be what everybody's talking about. Uh, I said yesterday, if you didn't hear it, uh, I'm not the not not the biggest fan of it, just because I do. I, I'm a fan of them wanting to go to blue numbers. I'm okay with mm-hmm. that. I just feel like it clashes with the rest of the the uniform because the the number just looks a little bit too glossy. Uh, so it's kind of like a different shade of blue doesn't match with the blue pants. So therefore it just seems like it's too much of a mismatch and I'm okay with mismatch. Uh, but when it's a mismatch of the, of the same color and they're different shades, it does, it doesn't really look so appealing to the eye. I don't know. I, I, I loved the, the mismatch white with the blue pants last year. Loved it. Um, you started the show by saying this was right underneath the Rocky Mountain Extreme or the possibility of the avalanche being called the Rocky Mountain Extreme. 
I don't know if I'm going to go that far, but uh, yeah, this is the first time I'm like, I saw something and I'm like, eh, I think we could have done a little bit better here. Yeah. It, it's weird, especially when we've been knocking out of the park with our Rockies alternate, our re- uh, reverse retro. Um, it took us a little bit to adjust to the blue helmets and blue pants. And mm-hmm. then when the draft picture leaked of the blue numbers, it what it didn't have that sheen on there. It was a flat blue. And that was okay. Like, you're I like, agree. okay, I can work with that. And then seeing the numbers now with that gloss on there, it's a little off-putting and distracting. And then all I kept thinking about was, oh, if they go blue buckets and blue pants with these, that's going to send it way over the edge. Because Mm. the blue buckets and blue pants were already on that verge of too much. I think so. Yeah, it was right with the white. With the white, because with the with the uh, the home uniforms might be some people like that's a little bit too much blue. Yeah, it's we're 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 treading some very uncomfortable uh, territory right here with yeah tweaking things, and I don't know why we would do it right after uh, like maybe wait another season because we like we just had the blue helmets and blue pants, and it took us a second to adjust to that. Like, is every year going to be a new tweak? Are we going to be the Oregon Ducks of the NHL? Yeah, like, which you don't want to be known as. Like, it, but you know the 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 logo on the front still remains the same, and I think like they're not touching that, so that yeah. that that's good. But they are they're, they're constantly doing these these minor tweaks and things. That's not a, it's not a bad point about you know waiting another. What's it going to hurt? You know, it's just, yeah. it's just the color of a number. Um, and it's a, also a good point about yeah when I saw the the. Uh, uh, but the Bujalski ha- mm-hmm. with the, I was okay with it. Yeah. It wasn't until a couple days ago when they released some pictures with the the four on four. I was like, oh, I don't know why. That's just uh, it's not not as appealing as I thought it would be. Uh, so I don't know. We'll, we'll do you think this will grow on people though? Like you said, like a lot of people hated the white uh, jersey with the blue pants. A lot of people hated that. But you saw some people towards the end of the year saying, like, it's grown on me. Do you think we'll have it with this, too? Or or is this a little bit too much for people to accept? If we win, I think it'll be a lot easier pill to swallow. (laughs) I think that, honestly, like, if you think about it, last year with the blue helmets and pants, if we didn't win the President's Trophy, I'm pretty sure that'd be one of the first scapegoats. We got to get rid of that. (laughs) Um, Right. It'd be the same thing this year, because... Hockey fans are superstitious. If this is mm-hmm. the thing that they can point to and say, this was where we took a step back, it will not be back next mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Well, because you look at, you know, like here, the the McKinnon, you know, that those are blue. Yeah. But they didn't have blue blue pants with that. So it looked okay on the reverse retros. Um, and I said yesterday, you know, you heard me say it, like, I'm still going to get one. Yeah. Yeah. Are you? You're still going to get one. Most likely, most yeah. likely, I'll sub out something on the wall, and I'll have uh, the glossy blue numbers hanging. I told you me. we can sub out that that red, right, right over the shoulder there. Yeah, oh. that, red, that red thing there. What, yeah. what is that? I don't, I have I don't a, know. The Mc, McKenzie Blackwood Devils jersey. Is that what it is? I got a Marty Brodeur. Uh, oh Devils man, jersey. you you are you are towing a line, sir. Wow. Okay. I got Banks on the wall. I mean, I got uh, Fulton over here, so there I got my go. Mighty Duck stuff. <laughs> it evens out. I don't know. I think we'll. I think we'll all be okay with it. But um, you're you're right. Winning cures all, including uniforms that we don't seem to like all that much. And another thing I said the other day was, for me, the Avalanche have always hit home runs with, yeah. with their uniforms. So uh, we've we've gone over 25 years now. And this is really the first time where I've been like, eh, it's not that I think it's awful, but this is the first time where I'm like, not super crazy about it. But and and the Avs got they got to know we're at that level now of a team where we make this slight modification and we're trending on socials from every publication and network saying, hey, the Avs have gone to a blue jersey, uh, blue number, like we're at that level now. We can't just kind of sweep yeah. it under the rug and just do our thing. People have eyes on us. And, and it's, it's noticed. Yeah, and it, that's going to go hand in hand with winning. If we start losing, 
I don't know if the I think we'll revert back to our jerseys of last year. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, uh, yeah. When when whenever they're available to order, uh, my name will be in that bucket anyway. So you have to. It is, you it's have a to. sweet red, white, and blue look. It's yeah. just I wish it wasn't so glossy. I agree. Totally agree. So. All right, sir. Uh, that's another week down, and we are that much closer to puck drop. So, uh, once again, appreciate you coming on. Throw out where they can find you and uh, the Puckberg Show. Yeah, you can find me um, at Shaggy Von Doom everywhere you look. And yes, that is a full house of reference. And uh, you can find uh, here in Puckberg over on the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network. New episodes every Saturday morning. This Saturday, we have Greg Alfaro of Main Event Marks a wrestling podcast and we talk about the San Jose sharks very and wrestling. Cool. Very and come, cool. And come check out the merch store too. <laughs> yes. You, you launched a merch store, a uh, Puckberg uh, merch. Yeah. My, uh, my brother, he's got three kids, uh, a niece and uh, two nephews, and they are like getting huge into uh, wrestling yes. and not only like current wrestling, but like I was over there over the weekend and, uh, my, my one nephew is so excited to, to like throw on YouTube and like old, like ultimate warrior stuff. He's obsessed yes. with ultimate warrior. So I haven't watched that stuff in forever. And here's the thing I wanted to ask you, like uh, when they were announcing him ultimate warrior, they said he was 275 pounds. Is that true? He or did I hear man. that wrong? No, he, he was, he's, he was a behemoth. He's definitely taller than I remember. I always thought he was like a small guy, but I was watching uh, a match with him and I'm like, wow, he's taller than I remember. And I thought I heard the ring announcer say 275 pounds. I'm like, oh my, of just complete solid, just, you know, from parts unknown, parts unknown. <laughs> parts baby. unknown. Yeah. So I, I couldn't believe that weight, but holy crap. Yeah. And, and see, that's something we talked about was how like wrestling and hockey kind of blend. If you like with the way teams come out and the entrances and, those two worlds seem to blend together. Like hockey comes into wrestling and wrestling comes into hockey. So it's a very interesting conversation. Interesting. Along those lines. interesting. All right. I can't wait to check that one out, but yeah, it's been fun to watch them. Th those uh, episodes or, or matches with them kind of recent reminiscing about when I was oh, their age watching the, this stuff. So yeah, the good old days awesome. of macho man and Stone oh my Cold God. The rock. I loved it. Loved it. So all right, everybody, that will wrap it up for today and for this week. So uh, if you're able to watch the the rookie tournament, enjoy. We'll be talking about that next week and uh, anything else that happens. So thank you, Kyle, for coming on, as always. And uh, we'll see everyone next week. Have a good weekend. Here's Joe.